Hello everybody. So in front of me is the uh, Ariana Thinker SE and you can see obviously that I have the hot end off. I've got the BL touch off the side. I removed the part cooling duct. Let me uh, give you a rundown on uh, why and what I'm going to do to this machine. So this is a Bowden fed setup uh, with a very inexpensive hot end that's been very problematic. Uh, two things. This extruder has a notorious habit of uh, the set screw coming loose and slipping. And the other issue is this hot end. Uh, you sometimes you have to add an insert inside of here because sometimes you can get some popping. So it's just a classic case of a nice little printer with a really lousy extruder and hot end. So let's start there. Now, these fans uh, that make up the uh, uh, hot end, uh, the one that's always on and the part cooling fans are both five volt fans. And what's interesting about this board is there's a jumper where you can change that from 5 volt to 24 volt. So that will prove very uh, important here in the next few steps. Now, there's a couple other things I could do if I really wanted to go crazy upgrading this machine. Uh, I do have uh, an SKR uh, Mini E3 V2 if I wanted to do a motherboard swap. But I want to just see what a reliable hot end will do for this machine. So the steps to do this is on several of my CR10s, I have the Creality DDS, which is the precursor to the DDX, but it's basically a complete solution. Uh, it has uh, you know, the, the mount that attaches to a CR10 carriage, which coincidentally I have, and what well, do you know, size-wise it's gonna fit. It might be a little long here, but we can adjust the belt tension with that. So this will be going on. The beautiful thing with the DDS is it has everything it needs on it. It's got part cooling fan, it's got a BL touch mount, and it has a always on fan. And those parts and pieces are over here and has its own motor. So, and I got this special from uh, Bontech without the E3D and I happen to have an E3D right here. So I'll be putting that together. And this is a 24 volt heater, so we're good there. And the fans that Bontech has included, which I do have in the box for the uh, part cooling, are 24 volt fans. So I don't have to run any buck converters or anything like that. I just have to jump for the voltage. So the E3D V6 will go inside here. Uh, everything should bolt on top. And the BL touch mount, fortunately, because it was already on uh, the right side, is gonna be pretty much in the identical position as far as offset goes. So when it comes to Dealing with the firmware, the only thing that should have to be changed is the fact that we're going to be using the thermoresistor uh, for the E3D, and that's a Type 5. So uh, literally, that's the only change I'll have to make outside of doing the E-steps, the PID auto-tune uh, on the hot end, and that should be it. So uh, on paper, it looks like it should be a not a terrible upgrade. And again, I'm still questioning you know, how the board is going to handle it. Um, it's a very inexpensive board in here, so... You know, we'll see. Uh, this stuff will all come off as well too because we don't need to have this extruder. Uh, we already have our BL touch wiring because we're just gonna reuse that. Now this hot end, just to give you an idea, uh, let me just take the silicone sock off of this one if I can get it off of here easy enough. So the issue is this thermoresistor is held in place by the silicone sock. So that was one of the other issues. I was getting a lot of under and over extrusion, and I believe what's happening is as this print head is bouncing around and moving and doing his printing, um, this guy's moving around as well too. Uh, a better hot end would have some sort of set screw holding this in place, but again, for whatever the reason, Arion decided to go with a silicone sock, probably just for the cost, uh, to hold it in place. And uh, the ER20 and the uh, Thinker S also have this weakness as well. So my next steps are gonna be to uh, remove this. I'll be able to uh, reuse this heater wire. I can just solder in uh, the new one from the E3D. Um, I'm probably going to run new wire for the thermoresistor just because this is cheap and I just don't trust it. <laughs> so that'll be direct wired all the way to the uh, board as well too. And uh, the other thing I have to do is I've already labeled these. As you can see, this says part uh, uh, hot, always on fan and part fan. So what I needed to do is make sure I label these and I'll have to splice in uh, the fans that go to the DDS uh, from those leads. I'll just reuse those leads. 
Uh, I do have some of the solder connectors, but I don't have them that, that will work that well with these very thin wires. And frankly, it's, it's better to use the Western Union, you know, tie them together, solder them, and then put the uh, uh, heat shrink uh, on top of that. So that's my plan. That's my hope. Maybe this will go well. We shall see. First up in the process is getting the E3D V6 put together. Uh, I'm just going to give the, uh, the video a quick watch again to make sure I do it all properly. Uh, everything you see, uh, there's a PTFE sitting right here. Uh, I'm not going to use that. We're going to use the uh, Capricorn tubing. I like that better. It's, it's slipperier, has better tolerances. So uh, that the tube that goes in here has to be a certain distance. Uh, 53 millimeters is what Bontech said because uh, we have a have a little bit of tube that goes from this to the entry of the Bontech, so that's fine. Next step is going to be to get this all together, and when we come back, that will be done. The V6 is assembled. Uh, still got to do the uh, silicone sock and everything. That'll be the last part of all this process. Uh, next up is to review the process of getting this installed inside. The Bontech DDS, just going to pull up those instructions as a refresher. E3D V6 is in position and let's see, uh, that's uh, Capricorn tube is the right distance. So the next step is going to be preparing the carriage. So I'll have to be jumping back over to the printer because in order to go to the next parts of this assemble, uh, this gets attached to that carriage. So the CR10 style carriage needs to be installed. Old carriage is out, CR10 carriage is in. Getting the uh, uh, belt undone was a little tricky with this old because they got these really weird teeth in here, so interesting design. Uh, as you can see on the bottom wheel, uh, there is no eccentric nut, uh, just a whole bunch of debris stuck to it. The CR10 carriage went on with ease. Uh, I basically just loosened up the, uh, the bottom wheel, put it on there, then tightened it up. The uh, uh, right here is the tensioner. So when these two screws come out, uh, this is a little wheel here for the tension and uh, that's fine. And this belt is a little slack, but that's fine. I can tighten that up a little bit later. So good forward progress. Now I can work on getting the uh, Bontech DDS attached to this and uh, we'll get to the, all the wiring fun here in a little bit, but uh, yeah, more progress. Mounted to the carriage. Now the carriage that I bought, the CR10 carriage I bought, uh, it just has the uh, two openings here. Most CR10s have a, a third one, and that's what this would occupy. Um, since that doesn't have it, it's basically staying on here by the, uh, the two posts that are uh, part of that carriage. So that should be fine. Now it's time to get the uh, E3D V6 inside here and close this up. Uh, then we're going to deal with wiring. This step has been just basically getting this guy closed up. Um, Got a little wiggle because of the uh, carriage isn't tightened up, so that's fine. Uh, there's some room behind here, so if you're wondering if I've kind of <laughs> screwed myself, nope. Uh, so I just have to figure out what I want to do as far as wiring and how I want to route uh, these cables. And uh, the original kit, you know, comes with everything, you know, with the uh, plugs all set to go, goes directly to the CR10 box. So that's, uh, <laughs> that would be nice. The other part of this that, uh, uh, this is the part cooling fan duct. I don't want to put this in until I've had a chance to heat up the hot end and then tighten it up, which is also why the silicone sock is sitting here. Uh, so there's a few things I'm going to do a little bit out of order, but yeah, this looks pretty good up here. Um, just got to remove that stuff and make some decisions on wire. Okay, BL touch, you can stay. Um, Therm resistor, I'm going to cut you right here. Heater wires, I'm going to cut you right here and here. Okay, hot end is done. Okay, this is part fan, which has been labeled. And I don't think I'm ever going to reuse this fan, so I'm just going to snip you right there. Part fan, I'll leave a little bit of a lead on you, just in case I want to reuse you on something else. All right, 
So the only thing that's really a riddle for me is what do I want to do with therm resistor? Do I want to tie into this wire or like I said earlier, go with a new one? Um, how long is my the wire they gave me isn't terribly long. I have some other, I could use some silicone wire or something. But I'm gonna I'm gonna ponder that. But at least this is done. That is done. And I do have a new uh, CR2 stand, uh, I'm sorry, VL touch uh, mount that will go on this once I get all this put away. Oh boy, a soldering fun. So front fan, uh, the connector to the rear fan, <laughs> um, it, it had a JST connector and uh, the female connector. It was a real challenge to get those pins out and then uh, put them back in. <laughs> Embarrassingly, that was about an hour and a half process. Um, these are just 26, 24 gauge wire, so I'm comfortable using these, uh, uh, you know, heat shrink tubing connectors. Uh, pretty thin wire, so you got to be careful how much heat. Uh, this is the uh, therm resistor wire that has... Uh, uh, I got the connector here so I can connect uh, over. And uh, the only thing I have left now is the uh, heater. And uh, like I said, I'm going to do the connection for that. I'm not going to use the heat shrink for that. Um, and then it's a matter of trying to tidy all this up and then finish putting this together. Pardon my mess. So we now have, this is the BL Touch connector and BL Touch down here. Uh, so the 24 volt, this is the part cooling fan. On the back side is a connector here. Right here is the always on 24 volt fan that keeps the hot end happy. Uh, let's see, the uh, back behind here is where I did my, I did my NASA certified soldering. <laughs> Twisted the wires and then you know, did all the soldering and heat shrink. Uh, these other little guys, they're just thin little 26, 28 gauge wires. So as I mentioned in the previous, um, step here. I'm, I'm happy with them. I was a little concerned because I was thinking to myself, okay, when I put the motor here, how, is this wire going to make it over here? And then it dawned on me that no, uh, Bontech includes an extension wire. So uh, there we go. Um, of course, one of the things we'll have to check is to make sure that the motor is going in the correct direction. We can change that in firmware if we have to, but we'll get there. So we're not going to do too much more assembly of this. The BL Touch will go on because why not? Um, I want to keep this open so that once we have the firmware updated, we also got to change the jumper to 24 volts so that all this works. Uh, then we have to tighten up the uh, uh, nozzle into the hot end. This has a little bit of wiggle. That's because of the carriage because the whole thing's shaking. But uh, yeah, so we're, we're kind of getting there. This is going to be good. Uh, this motor can come out. There's no need for that to be over there. And as I mentioned, you know, this has got a mess and it's gonna to continue to get messy, but we'll, we'll find a way. Time for an update. So I mentioned uh, previously uh, that I wasn't gonna put the part cooling fan duct or fan in because I wanted to make sure I was able to access the uh, nozzle because we have to heat that up and tighten it up at uh, a later stage of the build here. Um, upon looking through here, I have plenty of room to access uh, what I need to to tighten it up. So I went ahead and did that because I really can't do too much more to this until this guy's installed. With this installed, I just have to route this wire around. The BL Touch can go in. This is a, a BL Touch uh, mount that I printed out of co-polyester um, color five engine. So since this printer will sit inside an enclosure, I didn't think PLA would be a good choice because it's warmer in the enclosure. And as you can see, I've got some of the wires already staked around the back here. I'm just gonna have to get creative about this thermal resistor uh, connector. Uh, it'll probably have to just sit out here. Uh, fortunately, there's nothing over here to collide with. I do still have a little bit of a wiggle and I thought it was my eccentric nut, but what it is is when I, I'm spinning the tire here too. So when I uh, uh, put this together, uh, when I adjusted the uh, bolt and the nut, uh, I didn't have it perfectly centered. So I just have to loosen that, realign it, retighten it, and then I can do the eccentric nut and get that properly tightened. And that's why I have this out for. So making good progress. Uh, the motor is in, uh, everything is freely moving, so that's good. I went through and I back checked a few of the steps to make sure I hadn't missed any hardware. Uh, this can come out. The stepper wire uh, is gonna be connecting right here so that it can affix to the cable loom here. Uh, and then I just have to remove this motor. So those are the next steps. Uh, next steps beyond this is going to be getting the firmware ready, adjusting the jumpers and <laughs> see what else comes up couple updates. So 
the wire that goes into this little opening here, part of this, uh, you know, uh, piece here. Um, the wires go in, but they can easily come back out because they're so thin. They're like 26 gauge. So I got some electrical tape here covering this up. Also, no more wiggle. Uh, I loosened up the uh, uh, wheel and made sure the wheel uh, was centered in the V-slot here for the uh, extrusion. So that's been done. With that aligned, I was able to use the eccentric nut, didn't have those before, and get that tightened up and this thing is solid. I mean, the whole printer moves when I tug on it now. And uh, the BL Touch is ready to go in. I got that wired up and, and set to go. And uh, as I just mentioned, uh, I also got the uh, thumb screw here too. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, cleaning up these wires and uh, getting rid of the old extruder. And uh, step by step, we're getting there. Did a little bit of uh, wire management. Uh, kind of ran out of small, uh, the small guys, but um, my concern was this guy and I'm still gonna tuck him around at the front a little bit here, but uh, going to the full travel, he's okay. Uh, I do need to get this uh, heater wire a little further back. There we go. Uh, and then <clears throat> onto the back, uh, you can see here I've uh, <laughs> done a lot uh, as far as wire management. Uh, I do have the motor unplugged. It's going into the little adapter here and uh, everything is secured back here. So. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to need to put some sort of, uh, you know, one of those retractable keychain things here to help hold that in place. But, um, for right now, it's looking pretty good with the motor removed, uh, no more extruder, no more, uh, uh, anything. And so this is a nice empty spot. I put a, a big, I'm not sure if I have to tighten this or loosen this to make sure it has enough slack to get down to the bottom or not, but <laughs> if I have to cut this and replace it, no biggie. But yeah, it's nice that it has a little support here to help hold this in place. And yeah, another step. There is the jumper I gotta change. A little tough to get at. All right, so here it is. Everything is together. I've made sure through the control panel, everything's moving around just the way it should. Uh, now we're waiting for the firmware. And uh, one of the gentlemen from the Facebook group for the uh, Arion Thinkers, uh, he's the one that crafted the first one, uh, the first version that's on here, which has done a pretty good job. And he indicated uh, when I inquired on the group that he's working on a newer version, taking advantage of some of the changes in Marlin. So once he has that done, he'll provide me with a copy. I'll make a few tweaks to accommodate for the, the settings on this uh, hot end. And then we can start doing some fine tuning and get it printing. and maybe, maybe this thing will turn into a reliable machine, which I really need it to be because I have all kinds of cool projects I'm working on. I really need, I like the idea that it's 300 by 300 by 400. Um, Iron Man, you know, 3PO and all the other products I would like to make some good headway on. Uh, really like these size printers. And if I can make this a reliable machine, then great. Otherwise it goes away. So what do you think? Do you like videos like this where we tackle these odd little upgrade projects? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you want to see what I'm up to, make sure you check my social media. I'm active on Facebook, Instagram, and of course the website where nerdy is cool.com. I'm also out there as Twitter. I forgot to mention Twitter. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention is be sure to check out our 3D printing forums. There's a link in the description down below. If you're into the web forums, have questions about 3D printing, or just want to browse and want to get away from social media, check out the form. That's it for this time. I thank you guys for watching and remember this is where nerdy is cool. Please print safe.